Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. The holidays are coming up real soon, so it's a perfect time to do a Christmas project. So today, I'm gonna to show you how I built this Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how I built it. If you have not already, please like the channel and subscribe. So let's get started. Okay, the supplies I used was a three foot section of three eight round rod, two four foot quarter inch round rod, and I had five two foot sections. I'm not sure the size, but it was equivalent to 14 gauge steel. For the 3 8 rod, in the first foot or so, I made some slight bends so it wouldn't be so straight. Then I grabbed some of the quarter inch rod and I started cutting in sections between 8 inches and 3 and a half inches. I was just doing this for the branches and I was kind of doing it randomly and I was cutting them down on one side to about a 45 degree angle. Once I'm done cutting these pieces, I'm going to clean up the edges so there's no burrs on it. Then I'm going to bring it over to the table. I'm going to lay out what I have. I'm then going to grab those quarter inch pieces. I'm going to take them to my bender. I'm going to make slight bends in them, trying to mirror like branches, how they would like arch out. I'm going to grab the other quarter inch round rod. I'm going to start bending it. Nice arch. This is going to represent the top of the tree and what's going to hold the Christmas ball. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to start bending it. I'm going to line it up with the 3 8 piece that I uh, bent earlier. And I'm going to try to just imagine how I want the tree to lay out. Once I'm happy with the shape for the top, I'm then going to bring it over to the table. I'm going to lay out the branches, the stems. I'm going to try to figure out how tall to make this tree. On the left side, I did make bends to go up. Wasn't really happy with this, so I did re-bend it to have them arch down more, just like the other side on the right. Then I got a Sharpie, I made a mark where I want to make the cut in the 3 8 steel, lined up the top piece. The reason I made the top quarter inch steel is because I want the top to be thinner than the bottom of the stem. Once I was happy where it was, I marked that one as well so I can cut them. Once I'm happy with my marks, I'm going to bring it over and with my grinder, I'm going to cut out the top and the bottom pieces. I take all my cut pieces, I bring it to my table and lay it out. I'm pretty happy with what I have here, so let's start welding. The welder I'm using today is my Yes Welder Firstus MP200. It's the five in one. It does lift TIG, stick, MIG, flux core, and has a plasma cutter. I'm going to go around tacking everything in place. Once I'm happy with everything in the way it's laid out, I'm going to go back and weld it all up. Once I have all the branches welded on, I'm then going to grab those smaller rods I have, the ones that are about the width of the 14 gauge steel. I'm going to cut them down to about four inch lengths I'm then going to bend them midway, about almost like almost to a 90 degree angle, and this is going to represent the needles at the end of the branches. It's a lot of needles. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them all out. Once I'm happy with the numbers on each branch, I'm then going to tack them in place. You have to be real careful welding material this thin. I have my welder turned all the way down. Uh, I believe it was 20 amps. 
I am welding on the thicker material, the quarter inch material, and then pushing my weld pull towards each of these little rods. It's very tedious, it's very long because there were so many of them, but it turned out it looked pretty good at the end. After I'm done welding it, I'm going to get the grinder out, I'm cleaning up all my welds. Once all my welds are cleaned up, I'm going to wipe everything down with acetone and I'm going to get ready for paint. The only thing I'm going to paint are the actual needles in the end. The acetone will clean all the oils off the material. Once I have it all cleaned up, I'm going to get tape. I'm going to tape the end of the quarter inch rod right by the needles. Then I'm going to spray primer all over the needle sections. For the middle section, I wanted to do something a little different. So once I was done priming, I wrapped all the ends we just got done priming in saran wrap to protect them. Now for this middle section, I'm going to do a process of accelerating rust on the middle section. And that'll get us the color that I want for branches. And I'm going to show you step by step on exactly how to do that right now. After we have the outside protected in saran wrap, the next thing you want to do is get paper towels. Cover all your branches with these paper towels, every bit of it. And then what we're going to do is get regular household vinegar. We're going to pour enough vinegar on the paper towels just to make them wet. Then we're going to let it sit for about a half hour. The half hour is over and we're going to remove all the paper towels. Looking at the metal itself, the rust process already started and the next step is going to accelerate it right in front of your eyes. Alright, the next step you get hydrogen peroxide. I found one at my local pharmacy that has a spray top to it. I'm going to put two tablespoons of table salt in it, shake it up. Now what you're going to do is you're going to spray all the bare metal, make sure it's nice and saturated. And right in front of your eyes, you're actually going to see the color change almost immediately. Remember to get your backside as well. There is no such thing as too much on this process. You want to, anything you want to turn to rust, you want to spray. This is what it looks like immediately after spraying. You can see how it turned almost to a rust color right away. In a couple hours, I'm going to spray it one more time, then I'm going to let it sit overnight. All right, now overnight, this is what it looks like. It rusts beautifully. Next thing to do is to paint the needles. So I have an airbrush, now I'm going to paint the needles green. I'm going to make sure I paint both sides. I'm going to cover it well, and I'm going to make at least two to three coats on this to make sure that uh, it's nice and thick. Uh, I am not worried about painting the quarter inch rod underneath the needles. I think it uh, blends in nicely. While the paint is drying, let's start making the base. I have a piece of pine. It's 22 inches long. I'm going to rip down two pieces at three and a half inches. I'm going to take one of those pieces, I'm going to rip it in half, so now I will have two pieces at 11 inches. The other piece, I'm going to cut down to 3 and 7 eighths, I'm going to cut four of them, and this is going to help create a cross lap joint. All right, I'm going to glue up the joints. I'm going to put a healthy amount of glue on. I'm going to take two of the pieces I cut at three and seven eighths. I'm going to, I'm going to line them up on the ends, and this will help create the lap joint. I'm going to do this on both of them. Then I'm going to clamp it up. All 
Once the glue is dry, I'm going to put it together, take it over to my drill press. I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole, but I'm going to make sure I don't go all the way through. I'm going to go through the first piece, I'm going to come just shy on the second piece. Alright, for the base, my goal is to make it cartoonish. So I got black paint, and I'm going to paint every corner on both pieces. The attempt here is not to be really neat about it, just to cover every single corner. A little sloppy helps with the cartoon effect that I'm looking for. As always, if you have any questions about the project, welders, tools used today, or have any other comment or suggestions about future projects, please let me know in the comments below. Once I have all my corners painted up, I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. Then I'm going to lay out both pieces. I'm going to take the same black paint and I'm going to start painting lines in it to give the appearance of wood grain. This also will help with the effect of the cartoon I'm looking for. Once the paint is dry, assemble the base and also the tree. Be careful handling the tree because the rust is at this point is very fragile. It'll flake off. You are going to get clear coat and you're going to spray the branches and the base. I avoided spraying the needles. If you airbrush the needles like I did, be careful spraying clear coat on anything you airbrush. Some clear coats have a reaction and it will actually remove the paint that you airbrushed on. All that's left now is to wait till your clear coat is dry, then you're ready to put on display. I'm really happy on how this project turned out. I think the base does give that cartoon effect. And overall, it was a nice, easy project. It looks good. It's great for the holidays. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have not already, please like and subscribe. I will see you on the next video. Happy holidays from my family to yours.